Hey everyone, well it's my first day living full time in the Dodge Mahal truck camper and I'm super excited. I figured this was a good opportunity out here at beautiful Boulder Creek by the Four Peaks area to show you how I unload and load my dirt bike, aka deployable vehicle from the Dodge Mahal. I'll also explain why I went with the setup I did. Um, the pieces that it took to get it all working, how much I spent on it, and a few other options I looked into. So let's check it out. So the very first thing I do when I come up to the bike is I grab this pole here. This is used for the jack and this just helps keep it in place. This pin holds everything in place and this is just threaded on here. So we gotta unthread this pin and take this out. So once you have this pin out, put that to the side and loosen the bike. This is where the magic happens. Once you loosen that jack, it slowly lowers down. Look at that. Now we're pretty close to the ground. Not all the way, of course, but uh, pretty close. Our trash roux is very simple to get off. So the piece that makes this all work with the two-ton jack in it is called the Ultimate MX Hauler. And this is just a regular old hauler for a two-inch receiver hitch. The main piece that holds the bike on are these foot peg bolts with wing nuts on the bottom. I also have a tie-down strap that's, that I put up here, a ratchet strap, and I weave it through the handlebars and I push it goes all the way down to right there. Again, this is lowered, but it does move quite a bit. Um, I'll show you some shots right now of it driving with the truck. It moves quite a bit on there, but it's solid. And what I do most of the time to get these loose, because they're usually really tight, you wanna obviously make sure they're as tight as possible, but you just kinda rock the bike back and forth. That's also a way that you can get them a lot tighter. Um, and once they're off, can usually get yeah, again. It's nice to have a spot to put everything. I use these little magnetic trays um, down on my frame here because that's kind of how everything's designed here. These are just like for a toolbox. These are from Harbor Freight for like five or ten bucks. And that's where I keep all the hardware when I'm doing this. And I just leave it there and then I put it back on. So it works great so I don't lose anything. All right, well, everything's done, the bike's loose. So, now is a perfect opportunity to talk to you about why I like this style of a moto hauler versus one that the dirt bike sits on like a platform. So, this is a dirt bike stand. Right now, I could take the rear wheel off, I could loop the chain, I could change the sprocket, I could do some maintenance, I could take the front wheel off, I could drop the forks, I could take the swing arm off, I could literally take this entire bike apart on this moto hauler. I love that because I am trying to travel very minimalist, even though I have just about everything with me. I don't have a moto stand. The reason I don't have it, this is my moto stand. So I love that this doubles as a moto stand as well as a hauler. Um, the second great thing about that design is it doesn't put any stress on the suspension. The suspension's hanging there, it's fully drooped, it's fully dropped out, um, it's not compressed at all. You can blow your seals on your dirt bike, on your forks, just by tying your bike down too tight on a platform that's flat. So I really like that. It keeps, you know, no flat spots on the tires, all that good stuff. That's why I love this style of a hauler specifically. Now usually with this bike getting it off, I'll tip it forward and we'll ride the front wheel out. I'll put the rear wheel on the stand here and we'll just kind of push and it'll drop out real smooth but I got this big bush in front of me today. So we're just gonna kinda weasel it off and uh, shouldn't be too bad.
actually very easy. So, as you can see, getting it off is a little bit harder, maybe a little bit more steps. It takes a little bit longer than maybe a traditional hauler. But I love this thing. This also doubles as a step now. I can put my tools on here and work on stuff. Just sit and enjoy the view without having to set up a chair. So I really do like this setup. Um, let's do some ripping on the dirt bike and in a couple days when I load it back up, I'll show you how that goes. Utah and really get this full-time road trip started. So I'm going to show you how I load this KTM onto the moto hauler. This is a very important part of this. This is just a reusable zip tie. This is actually a locking zip tie. It doesn't have to be locking though. But yeah, these reusable zip ties work really well to hold the front brake. They also work really well to lock your shovel or your axe on. So I'm making a video about how I lock the axe and the shovel on with those. Um, so check it out, I'll put that up here once I'm done with that video. So you take the reusable zip tie and you put this around your front brake so it holds your front brake in. Then we're gonna leave it on the kickstand and we're gonna lift from back here. And when we lift from back here, the front brake's gonna be compressed so the bike's not gonna roll forward. This is like the only way that this is possible with one person. We make sure our kick stands down so we can pivot off of that. Okay. So we got the front, the rear wheel is the first thing to touch. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the front. We're gonna push up and get the weight off the front wheel. So all the weight will be on that skid plate and we're just gonna kind of shimmy it on there. There we go, it's as good as mounted. Now all we have to do is put the bolts through the foot peg here, weasel it up a little bit, do the tie down, jack it up and we're good to go. And again, all weekend we've had our hardware just kind of hanging out here put this guy through and put these guys on what this does is it keeps the bars from bouncing around if the bars go like this too much they can hit the camper. All we do now is jack it up with the two ton jack. This is the fun part. to here when we jacked it up so this just is kind of like a fail safe this just is the pin that keeps it all together and then what I do also is 
jack it up a little bit to put some pressure on that pin. So I have a bike cover for the bike as well that I'm gonna put on. Um, I plan on riding in a couple days, so I left the cover off. Other than that, uh, I keep it locked up as well with a few different types of locks. Uh, these are just bolt hitch locks. These actually use the key to the truck. Uh, so that's pretty nice to have as well. And I had to have three of them so that everything was locked on there. So that's kind of funny. Got a rotor lock in the front and then just kind of a cable lock that runs through it just to keep it on there, runs through the frame as well of the truck. Um, but so just to explain what this setup is, all this is is an Ultimate MX hauler on a hitch extension and rise. So this is the hitch. We have a hitch tightener here. That tightens everything up, makes sure it's super solid and doesn't go anywhere. Down here we've got a Factor 55 hitch link. If we need to tow people out while we have the bike on, we can do that. I can also tow a trailer right here with the bike on. Um, so that's pretty cool. Then we come up and we've got the rise and the extension. So this is what brings it up more obviously and out more so that the handlebar is clear up here. So that was very close. Um, so once we got the rise up, we got another hitch tightener and the Ultimate MX hauler. And that's it. It's a very simple setup really. It was very easy and simple to set up. It's just bolt-ons. This cost me, so the Ultimate MX hauler, I believe it's about $450 new. I got it used for about 300 bucks. Um, between the hitch tighteners, the hitch extension and all that stuff, I probably have 450 bucks into this setup. Um, it brings my bike up very tall. Again, it gives me a stand that I can work on the bike. It allows for storage where I'm not compressing the suspension and risking blowing seals over time or getting flat spots in the tires. So this is the best setup for me right now. Um, of course, another setup you could go with is there's a full hydraulic lift systems. We looked at one at King of the Hammers that was about $4,100, I believe. Uh, so not, not cheap. The cheapest option is going to be just your standard like hundred, couple hundred dollar rack that comes out, you put the bike on, it's a platform and, and that's it. Um, that's going to be your cheapest option but again not the best option for me and it would really destroy the departure angle of the truck because when this, when I wheel this truck, um, you know I got a lot sticking out back here. So I'm, I'm kind of still limited on how steep I go, even with having the bike this high up. If I just had it come straight out without the MX hauler lifting it and the hitch rise, um, it would destroy the capability of this truck off-road. So this is a great example of why we have the bike up high. We're on this very small, silly little like rut, not even an obstacle, just like this bump right here. And as you can see, if, the bike just came straight out. It'd be dragging right now, but it's got a little bit of clearance. Um, and this is like the tiniest little bump ever. Like this is nothing. A two wheel drive, anything could get over this. But, uh, so, thanks so much for watching. I am glad that I got to show you um, how I haul the bike. It's one of the bigger questions that I get on my truck and the setup. How do you get that bike up there? How do you get it down from there? Uh, How does that all work? So I'm glad I got to answer that for you. Drop some questions in the comments if you have any other questions or you want to see other features of the rig. And uh, glad to have you following along with my journey. I'm going to be heading north up into uh, you know Utah right now, Canada and Alaska in the summertime. The question is, are you down to mob?